An orphan, living in the family of a tyrant stepfather, becomes a cable car builder in the Alps. After losing his wife in an avalanche, he loses his instinct of self-preservation and volunteers for World War II, where he is captured by the army of the Soviet Union, Austria, early 20th century. Andreas is an orphan forced to live with a family of distant relatives. The stepfather turns out to be a real tyrant who sees the boy as a whipping pillow. The man does not allow the guy to dine at the same table with his family and beats him for any mistake. The tyrant's sons also react negatively to the appearance of another boy in their house and throw him out of bed at night. Grandmother protects Andreas and helps him learn to read and write. The stepfather beats the guy, but he remains silent even at the moment when the man breaks his leg. Andreas loses consciousness, and the doctor, seeing all this, does not help the child and does not ask questions about where he got such an injury. Years pass, and Andreas grows up working on the farm. The grandmother is still the only one who treats the guy well, helping him cope with his tyrant stepfather. Soon the country finds itself on the threshold of the First World War, and Andreas receives a letter inviting him to join the army. The guy sees this as a chance to escape from his foster family's home, but his stepfather is against it. Having gone to the soldier registration center with his boyfriend, the stepfather insists that he not be taken into the army, since he has already lost two sons and will lose the farm if they take his adopted son. Andreas is disappointed, but realizes that he has no other choice and returns to work. On one of these days, he hears a bell and the cry of his stepsister. Rushing home, he finds the body of his grandmother, who has gone to another world. After the funeral, he runs away to the top of the mountain, where he cries all alone with fear, realizing that no one else will care for him. That evening during dinner, Andreas ignores his stepfather's prayer and defiantly throws the plate on the floor. The stepfather decides to spank the guy for bad behavior, but he is too old for that. Not wanting to accept punishment, he warns the man that he will not be able to raise a hand against him, and if he does this, he will say goodbye to his life. The stepfather kicks Andreas out of the house, and he leaves his house forever. Being a hardworking guy, Andreas finds a job in the village and starts earning money. Soon he finds himself at a logging site, where he is engaged in cutting down trees. On the way home, Andreas notices an unfortunate animal and an old hut, inside of which lies an old man. Realizing that he does not have long left, the good-natured guy decides to save the old man and puts him on his back. On the way to the village, Andreas slips and falls, worrying that he could have harmed the old man. The elderly man is ready to meet God and leave this world, so he runs away from Andreas into the forest, deciding to stay in it forever. A little later, the guy goes to the tavern to have a drink and relax a little. Here he meets the charming waitress, Marie, whose touch evokes warm feelings in him. Having earned enough money, Andreas rents a house on the mountainside and gives up a whole backpack with coins for it. Not afraid of hard work, the guy is setting up a small garden, planning to grow vegetables and fruits in it. Soon, businessmen come to the village, offering to build a cable car. This will attract not only tourists, but also investments, thanks to which locals will be able to improve their financial situation. Andreas, in love, watches Marie with caution, but is afraid to approach her to get to know her better. The innkeeper warns him that the girl is made for work, not relationship, but Andreas ignores. Having gathered all his will into a fist on Sunday morning, Andreas goes to church, where he meets Marie and invites him for a walk. After a short tour of the village, the couple heads up the mountainside to Andreas' house. Showing off his possessions, he tells the girl about his plans for the future, assuring that every day his home will look more comfortable and luxurious. Deciding to earn more money, Andreas sets off to build a cable car. The boss refuses to hire the limping disabled man, but Andreas convinces him to give him a chance. Carrying out the most difficult tasks, he easily copes with a jackhammer and a huge load, earning his living. During another romantic date, Andreas and Marie brush their lips, realizing that they have feelings for each other. Having shared this with a colleague, Andreas persuades him to make a pleasant surprise for the girl whom he wants to propose to become his wife. In the evening, the couple finds themselves on the mountain and watches Andreas's friend light the signal lights, symbolizing the girl's name. Marie agrees, and soon the couple legitimizes their relationship, becoming husband and wife. Taking care of his family, Andreas asks to increase his salary and agrees to more difficult and exhausting work. One day, while paving the road, he notices that the lumberjacks have knocked down a tree that will fall right on them. Andreas warns of the danger, but one of his colleagues does not have time to free himself from the cable and loses his hand. After the wounded man is taken to the hospital, Andreas buries the hand, realizing that this could happen to any of them. Sometime later, the completion of the cable car is announced, which heralds economic growth for the village. 
In the evening, Marie and Andreas go to the inn to celebrate this event. The cafe owner thanks the man for the work he has done and boasts by showing him a light bulb powered by electricity. Technological progress shocks and surprises the couple, who have never seen anything like it before. Time passes and Marie announces that she is expecting a child, and they will soon become parents. One night, Andreas hears some noise and goes outside to look around. At this moment, an avalanche begins, as a result of which the man finds himself under the snow. In the morning, he comes to his senses, having miraculously survived, and tries to return home. Despite the fact that he has two broken legs, Andreas continues to climb up, using the fragments of a wooden plank as support. Having climbed to the top, the man realizes with horror that not a trace remains of his house. Marie found herself under the snow and was much less lucky than him. Having lost his wife and unborn child, Andreas is having a hard time experiencing what happened. At the funeral, everyone sympathizes with the man who has become lonely again. Slowly recovering from his injuries, Andreas decides to climb the mountain. Along the way, he finds a piece of Marie's dress and remembers the happy moments spent next to her. Having fully recovered from breaking both legs, Andreas goes to a construction company to get a new job. The director asks for forgiveness and states that the explosions in the mountainous area have nothing to do with the avalanche and its consequences. He also invites the man to take the position of a repairman, servicing the cable car and cabins. Returning to work, Andreas talks to a friend about how nothing lasts forever and we will all, sooner or later, leave this world. A few days later, the construction site is in turmoil caused by an emergency. Rushing to the crowd, Andreas sees his late comrade literally frozen into the bathtub. Having lost another person who is not a stranger to himself, Andreas continues his work. One day, he watches a crowd of tourists and hears the name of his late wife. Remembering Marie, he begins to write letters to her, telling her about his life after she left. Soon, the construction of the cable cars comes to a halt as the country becomes embroiled in World War II. Andreas remains one of the few men still working in the village. The rest were sent to war, and only he, due to his health condition and multiple leg injuries, remained in the village. Not discouraged, Andreas continues to write letters to his late wife and put them in a box buried over her grave. Sometime later, the man decides to volunteer for the war against the Soviet Union. Having learned that he is an excellent climber, the military sends him to the Western Front to conquer the Caucasus Mountains. Sometime later, Andreas goes to war and receives his first combat mission. He must make several holes in the mountain and mine everything around for a controlled detonation in case the Nazi troops retreat. Having completed the task, Andreas finds himself completely alone and only sees through binoculars another soldier working on the slope of a nearby mountain. Months pass, but no one returns to Andreas. The man gets the impression that everyone has forgotten about him, but he should continue to complete the task. Having difficulty surviving the cold winter, Andreas survives only thanks to letters and memories of the late Marie. Some time later, the man decides to leave his position and join the troops. Noticing his native flags, he sees armed soldiers and the flag of the Soviet Union. Realizing that the German troops lost this battle, Andreas ends up in Soviet captivity, where he spends eight whole years of his life. Upon returning to his home village, the man notices how much everything has changed. The inn has wiring and electricity and the streets are full of cars. The owner of the tavern not only welcomes his friend, but also offers to stay in the hotel attached to his establishment. Andreas goes for a walk and ends up near his grandmother's house. Here he meets an old and frail stepfather, suffering from loneliness. The tyrant asks to be put out of his misery and beaten, but Andreas refuses, leaving him on a bench. Years pass, and Andreas becomes an elderly man forced to live in the basement of an old school. Noisy children disturb him, and he reprimands them, but the school children ignore the grumbling old man. The good-natured teacher pays attention to Andreas and treats him to homemade pie. Sometime later, they go for a walk together and ride a cable car built by Andreas. After the walk, the teacher asks to take her home, where she invites the man to make enjoyable time. He is not ready for this and leaves because he has feelings for Marie. Soon the school is demolished and the teacher leaves, noticing that Andreas has been kicked out and is looking for a new place to live. The innkeeper negotiates for a stone house hewn at the foot of the mountain. Here the old man lives out his life, continuing to write letters to his late wife. One day he notices the discovered frozen body of an old man who ran away 40 years ago and says goodbye to him. Realizing that he hasn't been anywhere, Andreas goes on a bus tour and arrives at an observation deck. Along the way, the old man remembers all the bright moments of his life and realizes that he is not ready for technical progress. Returning home, 
he writes a farewell letter to Marie and immediately falls asleep in eternal sleep. Soon the man is buried next to his wife, accidentally damaging the box, from which hundreds of letters fall out. Thank you for watching. We hope you really enjoyed it. Please like and subscribe. See you very soon.